Come on, Kirby. I know. I want that sangria. I want that tomato. But they're all at the top of the cliff. It's just a little further. Keep flapping those little arms. Oh. Ah! Oh, buckwheat. Hello, everybody. Happy 71st anniversary of Bambi being shown at Radio City Music Hall in New York City. My name is Starchy Fox, but you can call me Starchy. And today, we're doing one of the smaller sub-games in Kirby Superstar, Gourmet Race. Now, as the name implies, this is a race between Kirby and King DDD. But it's also, in addition to being a foot race, an eating contest. As you can see, the two are just getting warmed up here. Although, I don't know if what they're doing is actually having that much of an impact. <laughs> Guys, cardio is not that good for burning calories. You want to do heavy lifting. Oh, I suppose King Diddy has his hammer. Now, the object of Gourmet Race, which we'll get to quite shortly, in fact, just now, is to collect as many food items on the course as possible. Now, this is a type of race that I can get behind. In addition to beating King DDD, there is a bonus applied for every um, leg of the course that Kirby is able to win. And there's quite a few food items here. DDD is usually right behind the player. He has a bit of a slingshot AI, but it's not hard at all to get many, many more food items than him along the way. Now, something I want to point out here in this second part of the course is that there seem to be some food items that are oh, only very rarely seen in this game, and some of which might only be seen in Gourmet Race itself, uh, such as that baby bottle and that, um, I suppose, lobster Newberg that we saw up at the start of the course. There, I just collected another. Now, I don't know why this is. Um, Perhaps certain food items are associated with particular palettes that are um, allocated to different stages. I really don't know. I've never read any technical documentation on this particular game. But it would seem to make sense to me, based on some of our previous observations on um, groupings of food items in um, certain other stages, <clears throat> such as the groupings of items we saw in Dynablade. Now, up at the top there, there were a number of different powers that Kirby can get to help him navigate through this last leg of the race, which is easily the most complex, but by far the best is the wing ability due to the uh, lateral mobility that it grants to Kirby. And uh, taking that upper route allows you to uh, skip one barrier, and I kind of flubbed that bit. <clears throat> um, and there is an advanced technique that one can do with one of the wing power moves that I honestly don't know how to do. It uh, involves Kirby being able to just rock it up by using sh repeated shuttle loops. There's a Timato hidden in the corner there. <clears throat> but I think we've quite soundly beaten DDD at this point. He's running just as fast as he can, but all he's going to get is a tummy ache. I have tried to run when I've eaten like this before in the past. It's not a fun experience. <laughs> I never was much good in physical education. I was often allowed to sit it out, in fact. Now, I believe there are 30 extra points applied for each leg victory, and uh, I don't remember the exact numbers that we had there, but... Aw, oh, poor DDD, he looks so forlorn. With the scrunchy mouth like that. Oh, poor penguin. But that's Gourmet Race, everyone. It takes about two minutes. And we're not going to let the video end on that, no, that would be far too short. There's a couple of other mini-games here in um, the package that we'll cover in this video. Now, uh, when we beat the Dynablade sub-game, that I, di I did not show this on screen, but the tissue paper covering on this um, Revenge of Meta Knight mini-game was torn off, but we're not going to get to that quite yet. We're going to go through the next um, next game that is usually done by everyone when they play this, the Great Cave Offensive. But before that, we're going to do this. Megaton Punch, the first of the two uh, really, really mini games in the package. It's essentially a game all about timing. I'm going to do the hardest level here just because it's a bit uh, repetitive if one doesn't. Uh, I'm going to let the computer go first. 
As you can see, there are three different gauges that will pop up on screen that one has to hit near the maximum with good timing. Oop, I flubbed the last one there. There's a power gauge, a centering gauge, and a pendulum, I suppose, for um, just determining when Kirby hits the block with the resonance of the earth. I don't know. <laughs> Note there in the background that this was the same um, audience that was shown during the fight with King Dedede in Spring Breeze. There are a few cameo appearances. Um, Mario and Luigi, of course, along with Toad there and Birdo, and um, it can't actually be seen here in this game, but Princess Peach is in the game's graphics and is um, just off screen there. Also, I believe there is um, up at the top there, uh, behind the chili, uh, who's partially obscured by the banner. I believe that's a nipper plant from Super Mario Bros. 3, although I could be wrong. I don't often see people call attention to that. Ah, just barely beat him out. And that's Megaton Punch. We crack the entire planet in two for the amusement of spectators. I can get behind that. Delightfully evil. Hmm. And finally, we'll cover Samurai Kirby. Now, this is also a timing game of sorts, but of um, a rather different character. I'm going to do Novice just because on Expert, my reflexes are not good enough. As suggested by the description here, we have to push any button immediately when we see... Ooh! I don't like... Ooh! Reminds me too much of Metal Gear Solid, and I never did really like that series. Exciting! <laughs> I can't really say too much here. I'm, I would distract myself otherwise. There are five opponents here, and um, what I'll do is always the easiest. It gets a progressively more difficult as one goes on. Enemies start to scale up as uh, one encounters them. They go from common enemies to mini-bosses to bosses of entire sub-games. Was Kawasaki there? I wish I knew what his um, apron kanji meant. And King Dedede has a crab on his bib. I like that. Oh, I'm not doing too bad at all. At one point, I had reflexes good enough to consistently get in single digits on that millisecond counter. Not anymore, though. Oh! That was close. Let me see if I can do this this time. Oh, drat! <laughs> Apparently not. <laughs> uh, when I was playing a lot of fighting games, such as um, Smash Brothers at a high level, I could have done that then, but oh, not anymore. Too many years of education. I just get in the way of important things. Like doing Let's Plays, apparently. Alright. When next you join me, we will start on the Great Cave Offensive. This will take me a bit of time to prepare because I really do want to go into this one knowing quite a bit about it, and it's been quite some time since I have played this game. I've owned it for 17 years, but I haven't actually touched it since, um... Well, a few years ago with the DS remake. And I'll be traveling a bit um, during the next few weeks, so it may be a little bit before you hear from me. I may have to come up with an alternate recording setup, but look forward to it. I am very much looking forward to playing this with you. All right, Starchy, signing out. Not sure I'm signing out of what or how, but well, there you go. Adieu.